Ladies and gentlemen, the ceremony is about to commence. If I could just remind you all to make sure that there's no flash photography during the ceremony. Thank you. Welcome to Cramlin Church. It's very good to be with you today for this important and marvellous opportunity to celebrate love. Let us stand as the bride prepares to enter the church. Let's stand together. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to be involved in leading this marriage service for Michael, Andrew Brown, Carmen, Rosa, Medina, Carmona. People are going to be joining us online from Chile and from Colombia and possibly from New Zealand. People are here from all over Europe to share in this service. We're here and we are here to celebrate the love that the pair of you share. So to begin our service, I have an important question to ask. Michael, Carmen, do you stand before God with ourselves as witnesses? Do you come freely and sincerely seeking marriage with one another? May God bless you. Those who live in love live in God and God lives in them. Let us begin our service, let us worship God by singing the first hymn that Michael and Carmen have chosen, Morning Has Broken. Like the first morning, blackbird. 
Praise for the singing. Praise for the morning. Praise for them springing fresh from the word. Sweet the rains new fall, sunlit from heaven, like the first dew. first cross. Praise for the sweetness of the wet garden, strong in completeness where his feet pass. Mine is the sunlight, mine is the So play praise with elation, praise every morning, God's recreation of the new day. The congregation may be seated. Let us come close to God. Let us pray together. Living God, we give you thanks for this special day. We ask that any stress in preparing may now be left aside. The pressure of rushing to be ready may be forgotten as we enter into your closer presence in this time of worship. We thank you for the gift of marriage and for the lasting joy it can bring to men and women. We thank you for creating humankind, male and female, that each can find fulfillment in the other. We want to thank you for all the ways in which love comes into our lives. Today, we think of Carmen and Michael as they prepare to begin their life together thanking you for the joy they have already found in one another, for friendship deepening into love, and love deepening with trust. We ask that they will sense you close to them as they take their vows to one another. We thank you for their homes, for the love and care shown by their parents. We pray that they may be as conscious of your presence as they are of ours. May they enter into marriage in your sight, confident they have your blessing and trusting in you to support them in their life together. These prayers we bring in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we have a delight because... Carmen and Michael have thought hard about the service and we're going to ask Sandra and then Esther to come and read to us from Paul's letter to the church at Corinth. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, 
always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only reflection as in a mirror. Then we will see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three things remain, faith, hope and love. But the greatest of these is love. Super. And now we're going to ask Esther to come. And she's going to share the passage in Spanish. Take your mask off to read. Okay. <laughs> si hablo en lenguas humanas y angelicales, pero no tengo amor, no soy más que un metal que resuena o un platillo que hace ruido. Si tengo el don de profecía y entiendo todos los misterios y poseo todo el conocimiento, y si tengo una fe que logra trasladar montañas, pero me falta el amor, no soy nada. Si reparto entre los pobres todo lo que poseo, y si entrego mi cuerpo para que lo consuman las llamas, pero no tengo amor, nada gano con eso. El amor es paciente, es bondadoso. El amor no es envidioso, ni jactancioso, ni orgulloso. No se comporta con rudeza, no es egoísta, no se enoja fácilmente, no guarda rencor. El amor no se deleita en la maldad, sino que se regocija con la verdad. Todo se disculpa, todo lo cree, todo lo espera, todo lo soporta. El amor jamás se extingue, mientras que el don de la profecía cesará, el de las lenguas será silenciado y el del conocimiento desaparecerá, porque conocemos y profetizamos de manera imperfecta, pero cuando llegue lo perfecto, lo imperfecto desaparecerá. Cuando yo era niño, hablaba como niño, pensaba como niño, razonaba como niño. Cuando llegué a ser adulto, Dejé atrás las cosas de niño. Ahora vemos de manera indirecta y velada, como en un espejo, pero entonces veremos cara a cara. Ahora conozco de manera imperfecta, pero entonces conoceré tal y como soy conocido. Ahora, pues, permanecen estas tres virtudes, la fe, la esperanza y el amor, pero la más excelente de ellas es el amor. Indeed, there are three things that last forever, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of the three is love. We are here to celebrate and to witness that Michael and Carmen are about to take their marriage vows, so I'm going to invite you to come forward. I'll take your orders of service if you want. Thank you. Going to invite you to turn and face each other, take each other by the right hand, and I'm going to invite the congregation to stand for this solemn moment. <coughs> Michael, before God, before God and in the presence of our families and friends, and in the presence of our families and friends, I, Michael. Declare my love for you, Carmen. I, Michael, declare my love for you, Carmen. I give myself to you. I give myself to you. As your husband. As your husband. I promise you my love. I promise you my love. My loyalty. My loyalty. My trust. My trust. My friendship and support. My friendship and support. For as long as we both shall live. 
for as long as we both show it. No karma. Before God, Before God and in the presence of our families, the of our families and, friends, and friends, I, Carmen, I Carmen declare, my love for you, Michael. declare my love for you, Michael. I give myself to you as your wife. I, give to you as your wife. I promise you my love. My loyalty, my, loyalty. My, trust, my trust, my friendship, my friendship. And, support and support for as long as we both shall live. The rings, please. <laughs> Thank you. And then Michael takes Carmen's ring and says this for Carmen, I give you this ring. Carmen, I give you this ring. As a symbol. As a symbol. Of all we have promised. Of all we have promised. And all we shall share. And all we shall share. Let's see if the ring fits. <laughs> yes. Excellent. <laughs> if you take Michael's ring, and again, you see for the other hand. <laughs> Yes. Michael, I give you this ring. Michael, I give you this ring. As a symbol, As a symbol. of all we have promised, all we promised and all we shall share. And we put it on the fourth finger. Excellent. And then we put our hands together. In light of the love that led you to this day and the promises you have made before your family and before your friends, I now declare you to be husband and wife. And as your first act together as husband and wife, I invite you to kneel down to receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and grant you everlasting peace. Amen. Amen. Invite Michael to help his bride to her feet and they're allowed to kiss each other and you're allowed to clap and cheer and <laughs> celebrate. By these symbols you have taken each other to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish for as long as you both shall live. What a wonderful thing. Please be seated. We are going to ask if uh, Michael's dad would come forward and read a piece which they have chosen and it is from John Muir. <laughs> Michael and Carmen recently walked the John Muir way. These words by John Muir really inspired them. Wonderful how completely everything in wild nature fits into us as if truly part and parent of us. The sun shines not on us, but in us. The rivers flow not past, but through us. Thrilling, tingling, vibrating every fiber and cell of the substance of our bodies. Making them glide and sing. The trees wave and the flowers bloom in our bodies as well as our souls. And every bird song, wind song, and tremendous storm song of the rocks in the heart of the mountains is our song, our very own. 
and sings our love. Thanks to readers, I ask you to come forward again and because we've got people looking in, I'm going to ask you to face the congregation and I'm going to ask you to give them a wave for those who are in Chile and those who are in Colombia. Could you please just give them a little wave? That would be really, that would be lovely. Excellent. <laughs> the camera's up there, believe me, you're on screen, you're okay. <laughs> But the people here, if you have a look at them, so if the pair of you stand together and you just look at those faces because, from, as we've said, from around Europe, these are your supporters. You have chosen them and some of them have gone to extraordinary effort to be here. So a lovely, lovely thing. People have dressed up, they're prepared to come. They, I'm sure some of them have brought gifts. You're going to have a great time later um, having a celebration together, hospitality with your best friends and supporters. It's a lovely thing to see the love and encouragement and support in the eyes of others. And you really met through hospitality in a sense of working in a cafe. So it's a big part of your lives. And I'm sure the reception down the road will be fantastic. I know you've got some exciting things arranged which will surprise people and delight them. I want you to face each other for a moment, um, to look into each other's eyes again, because quite often when we meet somebody that we're really connected with, we spend a lot of time looking into each other's eyes, into each other's faces and sharing our stories. And what comes out from those stories is that you're both unique individuals. You have different DNA, you're from different continents in a sense, you have different language backgrounds, you have different interests and yet you have found something deep, something powerful, something that attracts you together and something that you want to continue into the future. So I'm going to ask you to turn this way because in a sense you've got your supporters behind you you have chosen each other and you found power and joy and love and hope in each other. But from this day, from this moment, as you walk off this chancel, you're now one. You're no longer me. You're now we. You're together. And you are going to establish the steps ahead for you as a couple. Nobody's ever taken this road before. That background, the genetics, the language, your particular combination has never happened before. So you are doing something new today, something very exciting. I'm going to share, because you're interested in language, you're interested, words from Louis de Bernier. And I think these help me to understand what you're doing today. Those that truly love have roots that grow. Roots that grow towards each other underground. When all the pretty blossom have fallen from their branches, they find that they are one tree and not two. And the hope for you is that, in a sense, your marriage brings together two people, two families, two continents, two language groups. It's a real example of what we would like the world to be like. So, we would like to offer you a second round of applause and blessing and support. So let's show our appreciation. I'm going to ask you to stand down just for a moment as I share the prayers, and again, um, you've both been involved in helping to shape the prayers for this, and then we'll go to sign the schedule. So let's come before God. Let's pray together. Living God, it is our privilege to be here on a beautiful day with these wonderful people on this most special occasion when love is celebrated love for each other, love for the other families, love for your good creation. We thank you that we've heard about John Muir. 
we've heard about the Apostle Paul and the importance of love above all things. We thank you for the joy and privilege which is ours for sharing with Carmen and Michael in their happiness, not just here, but throughout this day. We want to mention some people who are not here today. Carmen's mother, Nympha, her sister and brother Alexandra and Mauricio, and her nephew and niece in Chile, also the relations in Colombia, Michael's uncle David and auntie Jenny, and all their family in Canada, also uncle Melvin and Michelle, and all their family in Cheshire, and all absent friends and family who cannot be here for whatever reason. We remember them. We ask that Michael and Carmen's house may be a place which is blessed, may be a home where Christ is known and loved, where perfect love casts out fear, where love is shown through hospitality to friend and stranger, where children are welcomed. We ask that they may always know your peace and continue to share the joyful and kindly spirit expressed this day. Faithful God, we remember in your love each family represented here. May those who have made vows to each other in the past renew their vows today and find them strengthened. All of these things we pray through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord, our Savior, and our friend forever. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand as I say the words of the blessing, and then the couple and their attendants are going to go and sign the schedule just over here. So please stand. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless us and all those we love from this day and forevermore. Amen. The hymn they've chosen is One More Step Along the World I Go, so I'm going to ask you to remain standing and we'll sing that as we make our way to the table for signing. One More Step Along the World I Go. travel to the new keep me 
traveling along with you to walk older. You are older than the world can be. You are younger than the life in me. Ever old and ever new. Keep me traveling along with you. And it's from the old So if everybody will stand and then 
you can either go out the same day door as the bride and groom, or if you want to get photographs to go out the other door, and there's plenty of opportunities for photographs. But please stand as the bride and groom leave to their chosen piece of music. <laughs>